So you're moving to Abilene, Texas. Well, you might want to get used to these bad boys because there are a lot of people that carry firearms around here and on your on their hip, you know, concealed. But to be brutally honest, I'm more comfortable with those people because I know that those people have been properly trained and they know how to use a firearm safely. And also there's a lot of kids around here that know how to use firearms safely because it's just a way of life here in Texas. And that's that's the things that we're gonna be talking about in this video is the uncomfortable things about Texas, specifically Abilene, that you're gonna have to figure out if you can live with or not. If you're interested in those things, what those things are, then we're getting after it right now. Daniel DeVore with the Frontline Real Estate Group at Fathom Realty. If this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything about what it's like to eat, sleep, live, play here in Abilene, make sure you tap that subscribe button and hit the little bell so you get notified every time we do a new video. We honestly get so many phone calls, texts, emails every single day of people moving and relocating here and we absolutely love it. So if you're thinking about moving anywhere in the Abilene area, make sure you shoot us a text, give us a call, shoot us an email, days, nights, weekends, it doesn't matter. We got your back when you move in Abilene, Texas. Our first number one thing that you're going to have to figure out if you can, or potential negative for you, is there's a lot of conservative people around here. And... If you're of the liberal mindset or the leftist mindset, then you kind of have to see if you can deal with that. Because in the last presidential election, Abilene, 72% of the people voted Republican. And that number is even higher in the surrounding counties. It's closer to about 82, 83% in the surrounding counties. So anything around in and around Abilene, they, most of the people are pretty conservative. The news likes to bring up, you know, all the negative about conservatives and and stuff like that, but you know, I'm not going to get into politics, but I can tell you that there are a lot of conservative people around here and all the conservative views that you've heard, you know, guns, all that stuff, that's something that you're going to have to figure out if you can deal with. You know, kind of speaking on guns, you hear the media all the time saying they need to get banned, you know, handguns need to get banned, assault rifles need to get banned. Um, I'm not going to get into that, but uh, that's not the view around here. That is not the view around here at all. And one thing that, I, that I've that i noticed around here um, is that, you know, the kid they teach gun safety and gun safety and and you know being responsible firearm owners is a huge deal here and the kids get taught safety and how to use guns and that kind of leads into number two a problem with firearms then i mean it's not a threat i'm just saying you might not want to move here because there are a lot of people who carry firearms around here and they actually just passed a month or two ago uh, constitutional carry, which is basically you can carry, and this is in Texas, you can carry a firearm concealed without a permit. Now, a lot of people freak out about that, but, um, you know, there, to be honest, here in Abilene, there were a lot of people carrying openly and still do uh, everywhere here in Abilene and but I I feel safe with with the people who carry firearms whether it's permitless or, or not constitutional carry whichever one you want to call it because like I said I, I know these people have been or, or they may not, may not necessarily have taken a training class but if they own a firearm, they usually know how to use it here in Texas because it's a way of life. 
Um, hunting is very prevalent here and you're going to see it. You're going to see people, you know, doing target practice, shooting all the time, constantly, you know, training basically on their weapon. And they, because they want to be, if something goes down, they want to be able to, um, protect themselves. Uh, but, and safety is, is a huge priority when it comes to, to weapons and, and, you know, guns and everything, because people realize the, what, what, what can happen with firearms. But if that's something, that's just one thing you got to think about moving here. And I'm, I don't want to get into all the minutia and all the, you know, politics and all that about it. But it's just something that you kind of have to figure out if you can you can deal with that. If you don't like guns, then it's something, yeah, it's a reason for not moving here. So number three on the list is the people of Abilene like to go to church. You know, Sundays are for church, and that's how it, how it goes. Uh, Abilene actually has the most churches per capita in Texas. Now, when I first got here to the base, I kept hearing that a lot from all the all the guys I worked with. They're like, you know, Abilene has the most churches per capita. And I was like, really? And then I thought about it and I was like, you know, everywhere I look, you know, every other street corner, it seems like there is a church. And I looked it up and it's legit. Like there are a lot of churches here. And it actually has a lot of similarities to where I'm from, South Carolina. You know, Sundays are for church. And to kind of give you a backstory, whenever my wife uh, first visited South Carolina, we went to Walmart and in my hometown. And we went to Walmart and they, they had a little rope around the, around the uh, you know, it was a super Walmart, so it had the grocery section and the other section. There was a rope around all the other, the stuff that wasn't groceries. And that was uh, closed until after church, and then it all opened up. And it's very similar here uh, because not anymore, but I remember a few years ago, they, they used to not sell beer on Sunday. Uh, now that has changed uh, now, but one thing I do want to say about it is it's, it's not pressed on you. It's not like people are going to be like, you better do this. You better do that. They're, they're not the condemning type of, of people, but you just got to know that, you know, for, for a lot of people in Abilene that, uh, Sundays are for church. And, Everybody, including the kids, are always very respectful. They're always like, yes, sir, no, sir, no, ma'am, uh, no, sir. Uh, but, and, you know, I love it because I, I just like, I like respectful people. And, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian myself, so it kind of plays into everything that I like. Um, but... If you're not into that, you you may want to avoid moving here if if you don't like those type of people. Now, number four on the list is individualism. People around Abilene do not like to be told what to do. Um, you know, whenever I bring this up because it's the most recent thing, but whenever all the mask mandates and all that came down, you know, for the first two or three weeks, Everybody was wearing masks, you know, social distancing, all that kind of stuff. But after those two or three weeks around here, you didn't, I mean, there were still people who had masks on, but there were a lot of people who were like, man, I'm done with this. Um, because they just don't want to be told what to do. They want to live their life and not have, you know, the government or anybody else interfere in their lives. Now, the hospitals, they were a little different. You know, everybody had to wear a mask in there, and they were they were pretty strict about that kind of stuff. But the everywhere else, the majority of people weren't wearing masks. And I'm not going to get into you know all the junk surrounding 
mass mandates and all that kind of stuff because that's not what I'm doing here. Um, but I just want to let you know that is something that you're going to have to deal with if, if you're going to, if you're thinking about moving here is you're going to have to, people around here don't, don't like to be told what to do. And, you know, during the mass mandates and all that, people were not feeling it. Now, number five on the list is education. Now, if you're looking online, numbers can be deceiving. Uh, but if you look online at Texas overall, it ranks pretty low when it comes to education. Um, I've got four kids, so I know what's what's going on with, with the school systems around here. And I can tell you that if you're looking at Redfin or some of the other sites of the local schools, that the the numbers can be wrong um, now because there's a lot more to it than just what the numbers show. You know, if you talk to the locals, you get a better idea of what's going on locally with the schools and the numbers may be, you know, wrong. They could be old numbers and stuff like that here in Abilene because we have a lot of great schools right here in Abilene and a lot of good private schools as well. Now going on to colleges, um, there are three colleges in Abilene. Abilene Christian University, Hardin-Simmons University, and McMurray University. And as far as those go, uh, Abilene Christian is higher up on the scale when it, uh, nationwide when it comes to colleges, they're about number 250 on the list, which I feel like is pretty good comparatively out of the thousands and thousands of colleges throughout the nation. And then if you want to go, you know, down to Austin, which is about four hours away, uh, there's UT Austin, which is ranked, I think, like 30 on the list. So there's, if you're concerned about colleges, there's definitely some good college, college options as well, and some good schools here in Abilene as well just watch out for those overall Texas numbers because you know it's not always correct uh, when it comes to Abilene and well, Abilene specifically but one thing about it is you got to reach out to us and we can we can help you find those areas that you're looking for and kind of tailor um, your needs for what your kids want to do with with school like if they're in sports we'll be like hey you go to this school has really good sports this school has really good sports and just let you choose we're not trying to push you into a certain direction but we're giving you uh options and showing you what the numbers say and what the school what the what the locals say about the schools around here but you got to reach out to us for that kind of stuff moving on to number Six. So number six is the weather. Uh, moving from South Carolina to here, it's a it's a pretty big difference. There's a lot of similarities, but the weather around here uh, is very dry compared to here in Abilene. It's very dry compared to where I came from in South Carolina. It's very humid all the time, uh, winter time, summertime, all the time. It was humid. And then we have our humid days here in Abilene, but the majority of the weather here is, is pretty dry. You know, the heat gets a little <laughs> crazy intense here. It gets up to about 110 sometimes in the summer. Actually, what was it? I think it was last year or the year before, we had 100 days of the summer were over 100 degrees. Just to give you an idea of what the weather is like here. You know, and with that comes long droughts. Last year we had, um, I want to say it was about four months. It rained one time during that four months. And that's that's a typical summer uh, here in, in Abilene is there are super long droughts. Uh, the water dries up, the, the lakes, the... Uh, there's not really creeks around here because of, because there's not a lot of water around here. There's dry creek beds, and you'll find a few um, creeks, actual creeks that keep water, 
but it's it's kind of rare compared to you know like east coast cities even east texas um there's not a whole lot of uh, creeks and rivers there's a lot of dead grass you'll see dead grass a lot um especially during the summer during the spring it, it's better but during the summer there's a lot of dead grass i mean the trees grow okay um but there's a lot of dead grass and there's a lot of grass fires because it gets so dry and there's not a lot of rain and we actually had a a pretty large fire last year it was called they called it the mesquite heat uh fire and i think it burned over like eleven thousand acres so that's another thing that you have to watch out for is there's there's a lot of fires around here during the summer because of the the dryness and stuff like that and the lakes kind of stay pretty low uh unless it rains a lot that year then that's one thing you got to watch out for and it's something that you have to kind of figure out if you can deal with or not so number seven on the list are bugs bugs are a huge thing here just a little backstory. i remember when i first got here i was a brand new airman and we had what they call halls and walls duty which is basically kind of like a janitor um and I remember cleaning up like hundreds and hundreds of crickets right outside the doors. And I mean, it, it was just, I, I, when I got here, I was like, I can't believe there are so many crickets. Like I've never seen this many crickets in my life. And then I remember a couple of weeks later cleaning up locusts. And again, there were hundreds and hundreds of locusts. And then like a week or two later, there were love bugs and little love bugs are little bugs and you know they mate so they get stuck together and there were hundreds of those and i i remember thinking man this uh this kind of reminds me of the plagues in the bible i thought it was kind of weird but uh, you know it doesn't always happen like that here but as far as the bugs go it some years are have, we have lots and lots of bugs like that and some years we don't have lots and lots of bugs and it kind of goes off of how much rain we get uh, speaking of rain the mosquitoes are pretty bad here too when it does rain um, but usually when it doesn't rain they're not so bad like this past year they weren't so bad because we didn't hardly have any rain so they didn't hard, have any place to breed and our, I know when my daughters uh, two of my daughters go out and they come back in when the mosquitoes are pretty bad. They come back in and they look like they've been hit with paintball guns because I guess they're slightly allergic to the mosquitoes, so they swell up real big. And it just looks like they got hit by a paintball ball gun. Um, but one thing you, you can do to combat all of that is you can have a bug man come out, you know, spray down your whole the outside of your house, and then you won't really see them inside and you won't really see them too much around the outside of your house. Now the mosquitoes we get, I think it's called mosquito Joe come out and what they'll do is they'll, we have an acre, they'll spray down the whole acre and for about a month and a half, two months, we barely see any mosquitoes. So it works pretty great. And it's, it's nice. My daughters love it because they, they don't have those huge whelps and that last for a little while. And then in the summertime, uh, or summertime nights, we get June bugs. And if you don't know about June bugs, they're, they're not very smart and they just fly all over the place, get hit in the head, you know, fly all, uh, everywhere. And those can be pretty annoying. Um, and then we have scorpions, but you don't see a whole lot of scorpions, but they are here. Um, but that's something that you're going to have to think about dealing with if you're, if you want to move here. Number eight on the list are property taxes. I know taxes, they suck. Um, and especially property taxes here in uh, Texas, they're no joke. Just to kind of give you an example, I just bought my house last year for 270000 And I pay about $6,000 a year in property taxes. Now, that's just insane, especially when you look at some of the other states and they're they're only paying you know fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a year in property taxes, but 
they don't have income tax or they do sorry they do have income tax we don't have income tax and some states are on income tax are as high as 10 to 12 percent so it's kind of a trade-off texas has some of the highest property taxes in the nation yeah, they're about average two percent uh of the value of the house now the best way to avoid property taxes or to, sorry, not avoid, reduce your property taxes are to get an ag exempt property. And just to kind of give you an example, I've seen somebody with 12 acres only pay like $20 in taxes. Now that's not including the house. The house is about, I think it was around $1,500, $2,000 in property taxes for the house. But that is a way to mitigate a lot of those property taxes, but those are only certain areas. And if you're interested in, you know, kind of finding out more, you got to reach out to us to help you find those areas and all the rules and everything else that apply because every county is different when it comes to ag exemption. And what I mean by ag exemption is agricultural exemption. And so you, you just got to reach out to us if, if you want to find out about that, because like I said, every county is different and we can help you save thousands of dollars per year on your taxes. Just hit us up. We got your back. So number nine on the list are the roads. Oh boy, the roads are pretty bad around here. Uh, got potholes all over the place. Just to give you an example, my neighborhood that I just moved into, they... The road right in front of my house, you know, there's <clears throat> looks like there were potholes originally and then they patched and now there's patches over the patches over the patches. And it's just when you drive over it, it feels like you're driving down a, uh, a dirt road, you know, that has a ton of potholes. I mean, it's just super bumpy. And that's there are a lot of roads like that here in Abilene. Now. What I think they should do is, and I don't think they've ever done this, is just repave over that road and be done with it. Uh, they are starting to get a little better. They're getting, I think they have a pothole crew, which all they do, they have like an app, you can report a pothole. They have the crew go out there and they'll fix it, you know, within a couple of days, literally. So they're doing better on that front. Certain roads like mine, they just need to repave. And I get it, the... That's a lot of money. It's millions of dollars. They, they have to allocate funds and all that. I get it. But come on, guys. Like, get better on the roads. Uh, they are starting to do a better job. They are repaving some of the roads. And I know it takes time. And they got the pothole crew and all that. So it's starting to get better. But <laughs> I, I want it to get a lot better. Um, but that's something that, that's something that you got to think about when you move into Abilene specifically. I don't know. I can't speak for the other Texas cities, but Abilene specifically, that's something that you're going to have to deal with here. All right. So number 10 on the list, last one is friendly people. And I'm being serious. There are a lot of friendly people around here. And if it's something that you, you can't deal with, I know some people are like that, um, then you might want to... Uh, reconsider moving here there's I mean I walk through my neighborhood and there's always people saying hi you know wanting to talk wanting to just get to know you um, if they don't already or just wanting to catch up if they already know you but yeah super friendly people around here you know I know I had some buddies in the Air Force they were from the Northeast and I'm not saying everybody from the Northeast is like this but you know, they didn't like it. They wanted to, you know, just kind of stay to themselves and do their own thing and, uh, you know, not talk to people. And I get it to an extent, but, you know, that's something that here in Texas you're, you're going to have to um, deal with is friendly people. You know, people, are especially in the summertime, are always having, you know, in their garage, hanging out in their driveway, you know, having cookouts, get-togethers, barbecues, inviting people over, and, you know, it's, I love it, and there's just so much, so much 
camaraderie and friendliness around here and it's just it's really nice people always having get togethers you know block parties that sort of thing and it's it's just really cool but if that's something that you don't like and you don't like friendly people you don't want people always saying hi to you then it's something that you got to really consider if you want to move here i mean that's texas in general but abilene specifically is super friendly that's your 10 things of reasons you may not want to move to texas uh those are things you really have to take into consideration and abilene specifically take into consideration if you want to move here or not because those are things you're going to have to deal with and some of those things you may not be able to deal with that's up to you if you really want to know more we can we can help you find that perfect area for the lifestyle that you want to live but you got to reach out to us you got to give us a call send us an uh, email or shoot us a text and we can help you out we can help you find those areas that that you want to get into and help you find the specifics of what you're looking for you don't want to move here and move into the wrong place because then you're just going to you're just not going to like it here if you got a family you can raise a family we can help you find those places and avoid those taxes and help you mitigate some of those things as well that that I spoke about but you just got to reach out to us that's all i got for this video we got your back when you move into Abilene, Texas, and we'll see you in the next video.